Hi everybody, I'm here in my laboratory. Did you know that I have a laboratory? This is the place where I come up with my wacky, cool, and neato inventions like root beer pop rocks, a cure for the common cold, and glue that's also on fire. Of course, all this planning needs a lot of financing to remain operating. So while I finish working on my bills, I'll go ahead and talk about that one kid from that one show. Jimmy Neutron is the lovable lad with a forehead large enough to fit all of Nevada on it. And the only thing crazier than the series is how stupid smart Jimmy is. It's established throughout the entire series that he might just be a little bit smart with that iconic titanium cranium of his. In the first Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, Timmy Turner from other iconic Nickelodeon show Fairly Odd Parents is struggling with his science project shenanigans and wishes to go to the best lab in the universe, and wouldn't you know it, he ends up in Jimmy's lab and also turns into this weird mole rat creature. But Timmy didn't specify to go to the lab of the smartest person in the universe, only to the best lab, and to be fair, that lab is pretty cool, but how smart is Jimmy Neutron in comparison? Well, Google said his IQ is 210. Very cool. We also know where that intelligent intelligence probably comes from. In the episode Clash of the Cousins, it's revealed that Jimmy's baby cousin is an evil little goon who wanted to kill off the entire Neutron bloodline. And because of their relation, we know that this high intelligence genetic thing comes from Hugh Neutron's side of the family. Supporting evidence behind this includes that Hugh's side has ginormous foreheads with big old brains, along with their last name being Neutron. But unfortunately, the show never really confirmed if Hugh was also at the same levels of smart as Jimmy. But we do know that when he was seven, he sat on a banana and that possibly changed his life for the better or the worse. Back to Jimmy, since his IQ is so high, it's pretty dang plausible that Jimbo here is in fact a boy genius. He definitely has similar capabilities and inventing skills of well-known inventors. He's produced time machines, eventually wins Nobel Prizes, traverses through space without the need of helmets of any sort, and has even gone between the cartoon multiverse to team up with Spongebob and friends to save their Nicktoon worlds. And you know me, whenever someone travels through the multiverse, you know damn well they piked my interest. But to reach these achievements at his age don't mean that much. Wait, yes it does, what am I saying? Jimmy Neutron is inconsistent. He does absolutely impressive things such as contact alien life forms who also happen to steal every adult in his hometown, and then makes a stupid bubble to bounce him to school, even though he has a jetpack that's probably better but less environmentally friendly, I guess. As lovable as Johnson Nutmeggy and his iconic goons Carl and Sheen are, half of their antics have no reason to exist, and most of them come from him not thinking his inventions through thoroughly. Intelligence is best defined as the application of knowledge and skill in critical thinking and problem solving. I think he's constantly inventing great things that could benefit humanity, but he rarely shares his creations and also fails to think about the consequences fully. Now, the purpose of an inventor is to develop new products and machines to solve specific issues within their community. Now, Jimmy has found multiple unique inventions that by all means could at least benefit his own quality of life. He has a machine that instantly turns coal into diamonds. The reason he made the diamonds was just to bribe his mom to go to Retroland opening night, which also happened to be on a school night, which honestly just seems like a bad idea. Like, why would you open an amusement park in a smallish town on a school night? That, that, that's just stupid. You're stupid. Also, in one of the first episodes when pants attack, Jimmy realizes that putting his pants away is just too inconvenient. So he spends way more time making computer chips to make the pants put themselves away. And then he doesn't share this chip with anyone or anything to make a profit off of it. That's just a negative time loss. That's not worth it. And even worse, the pants malfunction and try to take over the world. At this point already, he's on half a dozen watch lists at least. But it only gets worse. In Jimmy on Ice, Retroville is suffering a real hot summer day. Jim Jub Jubaloo resolves resolves us by potentially finding a way to end global warming, only for him to immediately regret this decision when the town falls into an ice age. Justifiably, the entire town tries to kill him, including his dad who switched sides. In My Son the Hamster, Jimmy trades atoms and bodies with a hamster. That, that. That's all that episode is. And again, by all means, Jimmy could easily be one of the wealthiest people in the world, as proven in Crunch Time, where he makes a candy so addictive that people wait at his house for more. On one hand, he regrets this decision immediately after, but he also wastes a terrible business opportunity. Jimbo, just sell it. You would be so rich. It's morally questionable, but profitable. And that's just business. We also know that Jimmy overall isn't too great of a kid. In Holly Jolly Jimmy, we find out that he's been stuck on the naughty list for years which is more than enough information to take that he's not too good of a person, but then he refuses to believe in Santa, making his dear friend Carl cry, and is immediately proven wrong when Jimmy and friends find Santa's workshop, and Jimmy almost ruins Christmas for everyone like the dingus he is. Also, every time Jimmy meets up with Timmy, 
he just refuses to believe in magic or fairies like the little scientist guy he is. Jimmy thinks that all the fairies are holograms, even when he gets turned into a snail, he refuses to admit that they're not holograms. In Tammy's world, when the anti-fairies almost curse the planet, he thinks that this is the work of holograms. Okay. Jimmy is straight up a nuisance. He's been either directly or indirectly involved with assault, arson, grand theft auto, I think, battery, potentially substance abuse, he gave Carl and his parents superpowers without their permission, abandonment, he sent his little robot brother to the moon, and also created life, I guess. Oh, and also death. There's been a ton of deaths because of Jimmy Neutron. Over numerous situations, especially in the movie, we discover Jimmy can and will do whatever is necessary to reach his goals. He also just kind of hardens a lot of the people involved with his antics, and Jimmy goes to college, Jimmy goes to college, and Seymour Nimmelfarb gets expelled. To be fair, Nimmelfarb isn't the best person ever. He got Jimmy expelled beforehand, and you know, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna delete this part, but just ignore the past 20 seconds. I think Jimmy was in the right. I mean, he was trying to expel him, but I, you know what? Whatever. I don't care. This is a video. I'm not real. In How to Sink a Sub, Jimmy is directly responsible for banishing all the staff of his school into hyperspace to get school off for a week, which... Holy shit, really? Carl. Poor Carl. In the first 10 minutes of the movie, Carl gets kicked off Jimmy's rocket because Jimmy tried to shoot a satellite into space before school and almost killed Carl by proxy. Also, I'm sure these antics aren't too good for his asthma. Jimmy has also indirectly gotten Carl pregnant with alien life forms and Who's Your Mommy? And that's a bad time for everyone, especially me since I had to watch that episode and then talk about it right here, right now, currently at this moment, right now, but a little bit earlier. Even beyond this, Jimmy has taken his friends both voluntarily and accidentally to the bottom of the ocean. Egypt, the moon, into video games, and inside Carl's organs. And again, Jimmy never thinks half of the silly nonsense through. Time and time again, he causes wacky hijinks and world-ending situations to occur, yet there's nothing in any long-term results that happens to him. To be fair, most of these instances included his pals agreeing with him, but I don't know, I feel like Jimmy should have at least a restraining order on him. But I guess not, since he's also the kid that everyone is friends with because they have the best snacks. Like, look at that refrigerator, oh my god. I think the reason he gets away with being regarded as a genius is mainly just because everyone around him is incredibly stupid. Like this little stupid idiot. He won the cotton candy eating contest and forever has to live as a water balloon. The first movie addresses that he's entirely responsible for hundreds of parents almost being sacrificed to Poultra, a chicken god with the name that's poultry and ultra combined. And that's a fun little play on words. After this long journey and flying near the sun for a few minutes, Jimmy would and justifiably should be shunned by his peers just for everything they had to be put through because of this, but the lovable goon gets away with it again and again, in part from Hugh's undefeatable charisma. Like, he goes to the grocery store just to eat loose grapes from the fruit section, and how can you not love him? Arguably one of the worst things Jimmy has done as a whole doesn't even have him in it. In the first episode of Planet Sheen, he gets into Jimmy's lab without any challenges, and then sees a rocket signed directly by Jimmy that tells Sheen, and only Sheen, not to go in that rocket. And obviously, a character known for being incredibly stupid, failing classes in middle school, and being obsessed with Ultra Lord, Sheen goes into that rocket and is forever lost into the deep abyss of space. The series was planned to end with Jimmy and his friends going to retrieve Sheen, but that never happened. In the episode The Tomorrow Boys, adult Sheen is present, so we can assume that Sheen got lost for a little while and eventually comes back, but I'm still not gonna lie, that's kind of a dick move on Jimmy's part. It's kind of uncool for Jimmy to specify that Sheen isn't welcome, as if he knew to expect the possibility that Sheen was gonna come in there alone. Like, how often is Sheen getting into the lab where Jimmy knows about it and doesn't say anything about it? And this is just the best example. Jimmy sees a problem, briefly solves it, and creates a new problem that's even bigger since he didn't completely finish resolving the issue in the first place. A majority of his inventions go wrong, mainly because they don't get tested or thought through thoroughly. It's why Jimmy creates all these silly times. It's why Jimmy has a dozen major enemies and occasionally does crazy stuff for the president, like stopping a meteor. And it's why it's hard to believe that Jimmy doesn't do most of this stuff for his personal gain. I love this show, but with all these crazy antics, I'm shocked that he's even survived as many adventures as he did. I don't think he's ever considered how his lab might obliterate the family electricity bill. Is it because Hugh constantly gets into the lab and cleans it for him, like the cool and supportive parent he is? Now am I overthinking it? Is this a cartoon from the mid-2000s? Maybe. So basically, just because you're smart doesn't mean you can't be stupid, and this fictional cartoon character is the prime example of this. And so am I! Because honestly, glue on fire is a really bad idea. Oh, that's not good.